Welcome to Galactic Grandmother Heart to Heart. My name is April, and my special guest today is Rosie Neal. Rosie comes to us from Florida, and she's a person that I've followed on Facebook because she posts some beautiful spiritual downloads, and she is now in the process of getting some EES energy enhancement um, system equipment delivered so that she can open a healing center. And I wanted to introduce Rosie to my audience um, and get to know her a little bit better myself. So welcome, Rosie. Thank you for being Namaste. with me. Namaste. So hello. For my audience that doesn't know you, could you just tell us a little bit about your background? You're, you're such a, a voice for spirituality. Um, you get these beautiful yeah. downloads, and I wondered how that came about. Um, when I was born, I was born awakened. I didn't never went to sleep. Usually when you are born, you don't have any memory to recall the process I remember the entire process so I came in connected um I remember my jump and falling 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 I remembered I spent very little time in my mother's avatar her body um and I remember the entire birthing system um, you know when I was a little girl I want to say from three to twelve I would there would be something that would come and interact with me when I say something it looked like what I would call my Kenny Rogers. It looked like a younger version of Kenny Rogers, a man with a beard, gray hair, white rope, and sandals. And he would be sitting down, and I would be on the ground sitting, and he would teach me. He would uh, give me information. But one of the times that we were together, I remember looking at him, and I said to him, you know, I don't even know why I asked it, but I asked this question. It was just so weird. Uh, it was weird because I was a child. I said, is this how you always look? And he looked at me and he said, no, we have to put this look on. He says, we have the ability to put whatever imagery, it was called imagery, on so you wouldn't be frightened. Because if we showed ourselves to what we really were, you would be frightened. And um, so I call him my Kenny Rogers guy. I never thought to ask him his name. We, we connected for years and years, but he taught me a lot. Um, he taught me a lot about left brain, right brain, and how to bring balance. and so he taught me that the left brain being the masculine analytical, yes. And then he taught me the right brain and what its capability was. And he told me that there was no wrong or right, but the key was to have it in perfect alignment and balance. So mm -hmm. as you bring them both into balance, that brings a, um, uh, oh, I can't think of the word, but anyways, it brings it into balance and then allows you to drop into your heart. And he taught me that uh -huh. everything has to come from the heart. And then uh -huh. he reminded me, um, he would show me a picture of, it would just appear. My grandmother had in her, in her house, a huge calendar picture of Christ where the heart was lit up, like really lit up, you know? And, um, you know, Christ sitting kind of like this. And um, he told me everything is created and comes from the heart. So you have the left and right completely and then drop down into your heart. And that is your sacred cross. It's not like we were taught in the Catholic school, you know? It wasn't right. like we were taught. It's like it's like this, this, and down. So, and the sword of truth. So he's, that, whoever that person was, um, and I think he stopped coming around, I want to say 12, about 12, you know? I must have been fourth, fifth grade. It was, for me, normal to hear people's thoughts. I thought everybody could. I didn't know it as a child growing up. But it wasn't until eight or nine that I understood that that wasn't working for me. My gifts didn't work for me. It was more detrimental. So um, at that point, I started to cover and then ultimately shut them down. And it wasn't reactivated until about 15, 16, many years later. Uh -huh. so, so that's kind of how it started off with me. I've always been connected directly to source. I know I came in with a mission. And at some point I forgot the mission and I become involved with falling in love and getting married and having kids, raising my children, having grandchildren and now great grandchildren. Um, all my grandchildren are grown. They all have their own families now. 
and I have 10 great grandchildren. And, um, and that's how it all began for me. Kundalini awakening, I believe happened about 12. I lived in a neighborhood that was all male boys, um, about my age and higher, several years higher. So I was the only female, so I had to be a town boy to fit in. But they came up, the older boys that were like 19 when I was 12, brought the younger group of boys who I played with this brand new concept, and I don't know where they got it, but they would have us be on the sidewalk, standing up, and we would breathe. And we would breathe and breathe and breathe, and then somebody would come behind us and hold us really tight around the ribs. I mean, uh, upper chest, and we would literally collapse. And I think that's where the Kundalini physical was activated because you would go into a place and you would just be vibrating and you would, it would be another world experience, something wow. completely different than what we're accustomed to. And we had no labels or terms or understanding back uh -huh. in that day because you're looking at um, probably around 70 ish, yeah, 1970s. So, and we had done that, I think, I mean, we, we did that all the time. It was our, our way of escaping and it was the cool thing to do back in the day. Wow, I wonder how they ever came up with that. There was a, my next door neighbor, um, there was an older boy, well, they had a lot of boys that lived next door, but there was, a, I believe his name was Martin and uh, I believe he brought it and then his brothers and then the next door neighbor, we all get out there and, and I don't know how, it affected or influenced everybody. We all had our own experiences, but years later, did they stay activated or did they not stay activated? I can't tell you. I did. Uh -huh. I mm -hmm. stayed activated. At 15, what had happened is that um, I had an aneurysm. I was in Minnesota and I, and I ended up dying from the aneurysm. Um, I went to the other side. I brought back very little memories, but I was a changed person after that my entire personality and perception and outlook on life completely changed. Prior to that, I was a little Catholic girl. I was very Christian. I wanted to be a priest. They told me I couldn't. They're trying to talk me into being a nun. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I want to be the priest. I want to teach. And um, so that's how I was. I was very, very religious. I went to Catholic school. I got kicked out of Catholic school because I wouldn't do certain things that I thought was uh, bowing to idols, you know, like you have to touch yeah. the water and go like this and yeah. you have to go and tell the priest your, your uh, confessions. I didn't have confessions. Oh, I got a lot of trouble for, because I refused to do all that. I'm like, why do I have to tell him anything? Why can't I talk to God myself? The next door neighbors were Pentecostal. They introduced me to a brand new Bible, completely different than the Catholic Bible. And that was the King James version. So I, and it just opened me up to another level. And then I'm just seeking information as a child. So I know I came in to be in service to humanity. I just didn't know how I was going to do that. Um, and ultimately, I would become self-employed. So at 16, I graduated and I opened my first company, uh, Automotive. Because I was raised in my neighborhood with boys, we were always thinking with carburetors and holly carburetors and um, putting headers on the, on the vehicles which gives it more of that you know, louder sound. Um, so I was very much into mechanics. And I think because I was raised with the boys, I learned to understand that uh, boys think with their mind mechanically. And as I began to get a little older, there was an older, a uh, year or two older girl that moved into the neighborhood. I become very good friends with her. And then the girls from at school that I associated with, I under began to understand women or females thought differently. They were more concerned about their nails or their hair and he, he, he. And that was so far removed because I had already adjusted to the way of thinking like the boys in the neighborhood. So if you get in a fight with somebody, you get in a fight, you know, slap them on the rear end and it's done. You don't think about it. You're not running all these thoughts and all oh, these yeah. emotions. Yeah. yeah. So, and that that's when I discovered the difference between the way the female thought versus the male. So uh, I left home at 13. I went on my own at 13. Wow. Yeah. Was there a reason you left at age 13? So I was born into a very dysfunctional household. Um, my mother was very narcissistic. She was an only child. She had to be the center of attention. I was the only girl and she resented that. Um, she was uh, 
my story very much aligns with Johnny Depp when Johnny Depp was on the witness stand. His mother, my mother, could have been the same mother. She was very abusive. Um, you know, if you weren't getting hit or whatever, she was abusive to my dad. And there was nothing I could do about that other than I had to leave or I wouldn't be here. So I stepped out. And I don't remember being afraid. I just had to think things out. I, I did a lot of thinking things out of what I can do from the level that I was at. And no matter how you look at it, you're 13, even though you feel like you're an adult and could accomplish anything, because at that right. age, there are, I mean, you think you, there's no fear. You can do anything, but you can't go and rent an apartment. You can't get right. a place. You can't have a room. So that was where I encumbered difficulties. But um, in the end, it ended up being a wonderful growing experience. I mean, because it allowed me to not be indoctrinated by the household's philosophy, so to speak, which if I was, I would never have been successful in my life, you know, uh, dysfunction. I will also tell you, it wasn't until years later that um, I discovered that if I wouldn't have been in the household, being born in of light as I was and awakened, I would have been taken out. So I think it was a good thing because being in the dysfunctional household, was almost like a layer of protection. It protect, nobody would ever look for anybody of light if they wanted to remove something like that from the planet where I was at, because they're all crazy. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I mean, I'm saying that, I'm saying that, buddy. But yeah, yeah, it's dysfunctional. You know, you're uh, looking at Detroit, Michigan, Motor City, Motown back in, you know, 19, 1950, 1960. So yeah. Wow. Going yeah. forward then, um, how was your health back then? Were you I was very physical and very healthy, very mm -hmm. physical, very healthy. What happened? Did you get into an automobile accident, which caused a lot of injuries to you? Yes, I, I had an automobile accident um, and I looked it up this morning, but it was in May 8th, 2019. And it was where a young teenager, 14, 15 year old teenager took the mother's keys. And we have a lot of stop signs where we live. We have to stop and stop and stop. So a lot of four ways. And she went right through the stop sign. I couldn't stop. She had a passenger, a young girl. I thought for sure I was going to kill the passenger. And I remember just hitting my brakes. Analog kept kicking in, which locked the steering to go right in the center of where that girl was on the passenger side. And I remember pumping them brakes on and off to break the analog so I can get some kind of control. And I ended up hitting right behind the driver's seat. So I saved her life. I mean, by doing that, I saved her life. But ultimately, we went into a spiral after the hit and then hit something else. And the car flew up in the, all the way up in the air, came back down on its nose and then kind of rolled over, which created a lot of injuries like to my knees, um, to my brain, traumatic brain injury, frontal lobes, rear lobes, and even to the side. And they're telling me because of the swelling it hit in the skull, that's where the damage. So it killed off a lot of the frontal lobe on the brain um, and it had severe damage to the back as well. Um, my spine, my hips, my pelvis. I think there was three herniated discs in my neck, but ultimately my spine, L3, 4, 5, and 6 completely fused together. So, you know, as a young girl, I was very much into dancing and right now there's, I don't dance. So that that's gone, you know, that flow. And I think everybody needs that flow. So, yeah. So when um, did you discover the EES? You know, I can't remember how that came into my life, but I was doing so much research as I, as I was working with my brain and my neurologist. Um, he hooked me up to some kind of machine with a million wires to my head that literally lit up the inside of my skull. I can see nothing but pure white light mm -hmm. essence. It was almost like being returned to source. And I'm, I, you know, and I was very conscious when it happened. And I says, you know, it's like being back with God. And he says, you know, I hear that quite a bit. So he started working with me. And as I started to gain a little function, because I was literally in a place that I couldn't think, I didn't understand words. It was like, I could have been in Greece and they could have been speaking Greek, but I couldn't think of how to convey language either because as I would speak, like if I had to go to the bathroom, because I couldn't walk. As I could speak, I would say, I, I would go want to say, I want, I needed help to go to the bathroom, 
but I would get stuck on the, the, and I'd think, the, it's familiar. It sounds vaguely familiar. I could feel the word. I knew at some point I knew it, but I couldn't pull that out or was or were or see. So I couldn't really communicate. And, um, it caused me a lot of frustration inside. Yeah. And um, it was very difficult. I was entrapped embodiment. You know, I couldn't get around physically. My mind didn't work. Um, the, I had no memory recall. To this day, I can't, you know, I know I was there for a lot of my uh, kids and grandkids' birth, but I mean, I don't have any recall of any of it. You know, there's a lot of things, a lot of missing time. Um, I'm deaf and I wear hearing aids. And when I take my hearing aids out, I go right back into absolute peace. I go back into coherent, heart brain coherence. And, and I live there and I prefer my hearing aids to be out. But if I have to have a communication, I have to put them in. And, um, and now that I learned to talk again and I'm attributing, I did a lot of work myself with my neuro neurologist and many doctors, but I think the EES really brought me back where I can have this conversation where yeah. I can have, you know, the words and it's a whole nother world. It's a whole nother world. So um, when I put the hearing aids back in, the first thing you hear when you put the hearing aids back in when you're deaf is that white noise is what I call it, white noise. Uh -huh. And white noise, um, what it feels like when you put it in, because everything with me is based on what it feels like, not so much thought. So what it feels like is electromagnetic energy and it almost feels like when I have the hearing aids in I'm almost like disconnected from here down because it because you're in you're um, it's about the house it's about the pool it's what I see it's you know it's almost like a whole different world when the hearing aids are out I think I'm more in a higher dimensional frequency because it's about being in balance and flow and gratitude and a whole different place that's fascinating because I haven't had that experience, but I was wondering, so how long ago did you start doing the treatments for the enhanced um, energy system? So once I found out about, I get a lot of private messages and I got it through the private messenger. Once I got that information, I researched and start looking and looking and looking. And then I found a, a unit, my best friend, um, we do a lot of, uh, we did a lot of healing work together. And she moved to Georgia with her husband and they got a beautiful place in the mountains. And uh, me and my other friend, Julie, we flew in and um, we went to her place two hours from the airport, another two hours higher in the mountain into Etowah, which is in Cartersville, Georgia. And Etowah was a house. It wasn't anything but a house, a person that bought a machine for himself because he had taken a fall and he had healed himself he opened it up for the public. So you have one room with eight little chairs touching each other. And I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have any expectations other, you know, I went in there, you know, and I asked God to give me whatever it was that I needed, you know? And I was really thinking in the back of my mind, my brain, my brain is where I really needed it. When I went there, you know, I, I had a hard time getting around. I couldn't really move. I couldn't really get around. Um, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. So when we get to the location and I get in the chair, I remember I no longer put my head back, looked at the machine and I was gone. I was gone. Um, and I was totally, when I say gone, deep, deep, deep sleep, deep sleep. Um, somebody kicked me, a woman off to the right, was trying to get up because the chairs were so close. She kicked my foot and it startled me. And when it startled me, I awakened into a, what I would say half in and half out quasi state, not fully awakened and still half asleep, opening my eyes. And it's at that moment that I could feel all this energy going to my brain, the front, the back, the sides, the sinuses, my third eye, my eyes. I mean, it was so intense. And in that second, in that moment, I also felt it bombarding my lungs. So, and I didn't understand, you know, why that was happening. I mean, and then boom, you know, seconds go and you're wide awake and you feel nothing. So if you do go to an EES, it's imperative that you go to sleep. It's imperative. Hmm. But that was my first experience. And that was September 14th uh, last year. So 2022. And Four how, hours. Many, how many sessions or how many hours have you had 
since then? So when I was in Georgia, I was in the, the scalar wave system for four hours. And it was during them four hours that when I got up, I'm telling you, miracles had already started more than I could even convey. I mean, I stood up and I stood erect. I didn't need a, I didn't need Walker. I didn't need a cane. I stood erect on my own power. I felt empowered. I felt physically strong for the first time in years, many years. Um, and then I remember going to the car and the long two hour drive back to her home in the mountains. And it was incredible. I went up, I walked up a mountain. I walked down the mountain. I got hurt my best friend, Janet, to bring her dog. We went up the mountain again and we walked around and it was something that for me would have been impossible, impossible. I mean, not even a thought. There was no way I could even, I wouldn't even thought of walking up a mountain. I could hardly get out of the car. You know, I could hardly get out. I was in really bad physical shape. And it was then that I realized that my mind, I could have thoughts. I mean, prior to that, it was, I was just functioning. I don't even know how to explain it, but I could have thoughts and I could have conversations and other than, you know, basic things. And, and we got into deep conversations and it was that day in the mountains with Julie uh, Kayata and Janet Sanders, my best friends that we decided to do a partnership and buy the machine wow. right then. I was sold. I was sold right there. Wow. I mean, I could speak and I can walk and I didn't even know if it was going to last, you know, is it going to, I'm thinking, is this going to last like a day, three days, five days that night? I went to bed early. They stayed up late. I went to bed about nine o'clock because I normally get up you know, about three o'clock, I was already exhausted from the flight in my day. Bear in mind, my life prior to that was bedridden day in and day out. I was bedridden 90% of the time. Mm. Um, so that was a huge, doing all that activity was a huge amount for me. So I go to bed early. I remember I laid down in that bed. And when I laid, when my head hit the pillow on the bed, I was wide awake. I felt all the energy that I felt when I was in that ES, the EES in Ethowa. It was like, I just walked back into that guy's house and sat in the chair. It was so activated throughout my entire body. And I know that the healing was continuing at that point. And it was the next morning that I woke up. Um, I believe it was about 3.30 and I didn't feel the activity anymore, but I was strong. I was so strong. It was yeah. a miracle. Nothing short of a miracle. Did you go back to the same place or did you go somewhere else after that? Well, no, we, we ended up flying home. I had a granddaughter that was um, pregnant and was getting ready to have birth. And I wanted to be home for that. So we, I came home. Now that was on the 14th of September, 28th of September, Ian, Hurricane Ian came through. And it was, uh, very, I'm at ground zero where I live. So we had... Um, I just had the estimate uh, a week or so ago, 285,000 worth of damages to my home. So, but anyways, what my point was, if I wasn't in that machine, I would never have been able to make it. I take care of my two challenged brothers and I have my daughter and we had to be the women and the men. So we had to cook outside, get everything ready, pack everything up before the hurricane. And then after the hurricane, you think you get ready to go back to normal life. No, we didn't even have power for eight weeks or a little over. Oh. You know, we didn't have internet. You couldn't get a signal, but we had no air. Uh, yeah, it, it got to be a bit much. Thanksgiving rolled around and we invited some people over for Thanksgiving um, for a week or two visit and they came in and they ended up being sick. But when they came in, there were no symptoms. They didn't know they were sick. But by the time, I think it was Thanksgiving day, we began to see it. I got sick from them and it spiraled me right down and I couldn't come back up. I remember I went to the hospital. I stayed there for, I don't remember, days. And the IVs got me back up. I was so dehydrated, but I was really, really sick. And then ultimately, when I came home from the hospital, I, was, I felt really good the next day. And then I collapsed again on the second day home. It was at that point, uh, we didn't have an EES here. So I called a man in Sarasota by the name of Jim. And he said, Rosie, they're going to be open uh, EES in Sarasota. I go, is it open? He goes, well, it's not yet. He goes, they were scheduled to, I guess, open the month prior, but they were backlogged. So it didn't open. So he gave me the number, her cell number of the lady that owned her. Her name was Nancy. And um, I called Nancy and I said, look, I'm so sick. I really need to come in. 
she says, well, we'll be open and blah, blah, blah date. And it was only a couple of days later, I was in the EES system where she was at. There, it was a 12 unit. Etowa, Georgia had a 12 unit. I've never been into anything other than a 12 unit. All my healings have been done in a 12 unit. So I went to Sarasota and another four hours in there, I was back. I mean, I fall asleep, I wake up and I could dance. I mean, she's like, oh my God, Rosie. You know, cause I walk in and I could barely hold my body weight up. It took every ounce of strength to get from the car to the facility and then to the chair. And then, I mean, it was really bad. It was really bad. And then four hours later, I mean, I could like dance. I could do the jitterbug. I mean, I could talk. It's like, da, 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 da. You know, she goes, oh my God, you did not, you were so bad. But it, it gave her confirmation because I told her, I humbly bowed to her because she wouldn't have put that in. I don't know what I, I would have to find some. And then of course, so yeah. I was very blessed and so grateful that they opened up in Sarasota. If I was to tell you, go to an EES, go to an EES. Um, the scalar waves are unbelievable. They're biophotonic light. And we are basically, based on the research, anywhere from 70 to 90% water. So you go into the scalar waves, the scalar waves literally go into the cell of your body. And we have tens and tens of thousands of cells. It goes right directly into the mitochondria. Now, mitochondria of a cell it is the center, if you go back to biology, of the cell. It's the powerhouse of the cell. It operates everything. Generally, it runs off of 0 0.007 volts of electricity each cell. We are a nuclear station walking, walking around, literally, because we have over 65,000 cells within our body. Actually, it's more than that. Um, but when you look at it, not only do you, that cell is the powerhouse, which gives us the energy to heal and to do whatever our body needs to do to keep us at the highest potential amped up. It has another wall, it's double walled. So healing the mitochondria is a very, very difficult process. And I tried and I researched for years to try to heal the mitochondria before my accident, because I, I suffer from chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia. I mean, a conglomerate of things. Um, and I tried so hard to heal myself that I went to every doctor. I paid all my co-pays and my 20% or whatever it was. I put a th 100,000 out of my pocket trying to find something to heal myself because I function on you be in bed. You get up, you move for 10 minutes, you have to go lay down. And then the body pain, they put me on oxycodone. So, I mean, I was getting 23 different meds a day for years and it knocked out the liver. So, I mean, I really, I mean, I was suffering before the accident. The accident just took me into a place that I existed in my body without a mind. I, my eyes, I mean, I couldn't see. I had, uh, there's this huge black, I want, it's a huge black area that I could not see. Um, so I went to the eye doctor. They said there wasn't much they can do that, do for that, that it was um, macular degeneration. Um, I would tell you macular degeneration, that big black spot, is gone. It's gone. I can't tell you how many hours I was in it before I realized it. I I must have had 17 hours and I don't drive at night. I'm totally night blind. I don't drive at night. Had to drive and it was just out of the blue. I'm driving. I felt so comfortable for the first time. And it's just like I'm hitting the stop sign. Cars are coming toward me. I realized my night blindness was 100% gone. How long had it been fixed? I had no idea because I don't go out at night because I can't see at night, literally can't see at night. It was gone. Yeah, I, I did realize almost immediately because I do wear glasses. I realized almost immediately that in their readers, they're not you know right. regular glasses, but uh, I went from 275, I think it was after four hours to 175 readers. Wow. So yeah, that was for four hours within four, that first initial four hour visit. Um, and I never went out at night to know about the night blindness. So I can't tell you if that happened during the first four hour first visit or was it the second four hour visit? I don't know. And, and I had a total of 17 hours uh, vested in going into these waves over a span of months. So it wasn't like a week and then I went back in a week. It was like I made it from September 14th all the way through the hurricane. And then all the way through November, Thanksgiving Day, when I got sick, 
went back in for four hours. And then all of a sudden that took me all the way through, I think it was to January. I just, you know, continued until I felt I didn't need it anymore. Wow. You know, because when you go in there, you don't know what's, what it's going to heal. You don't control anything. And, um, and that's one of the things that I asked, uh, Dr. Sandra, I says, well, when I come in here, how do I know what's going to happen? And she's like, your body has a body intelligence and that your body knows what needs to be healed. And it will literally pull them raised to wherever it needs to go. But I would tell you, my back was so racked up with arthritis, you know, the infusion from L3, 4, 5, and 6, and then my neck having all them herniated discs as well. So I would, I, my whole body and my hips and my pelvis, that's what made walking so hard, my knees. Um, I'm telling you, um, whatever happens in there, I didn't know it was affecting my back. But I can I can tell you I can walk and I can stand erect now. I don't hunch over anymore, you know, um, and I feel very strong. So if I was going to use a walker, I can navigate a walker because I have upper body strength. But all them years of being sick with a walker, you could go very little because you could hardly hold on. Your hands were so frail and weak and you had no body strength. So you could fall even with the walker. You can fall. Wow, that it does sound like um such a miracle i i'm looking forward to trying it myself now you've ordered this equipment do they make it to order or how does that work i made the decision to buy it ultimately what had happened was that um i believe uh i did a live on facebook about my experience with the eefs and i wanted to put it out there to my audience because it was miraculous for me it wasn't little it was like miracle for me so mm -hmm. I, I went on Facebook and all these people start calling me wanting to order a machine for their house and um and asking information how long it's been out and all these different things so I had to learn about the machine um ultimately I called Vegas to put in two orders someone in North Carolina wanted one and then someone in New York wanted one and when I did it I was put talking to the lady on the other side of the phone about their orders when all of a sudden I wasn't thinking it, it just came out my mouth. Oh yeah, I want one too. I'll go for this unit and da 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 da. You know, I can wire transfer you the funds. Da 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 da. When it came out, it just came out. I wasn't preparing to do that at that moment. It just God, something greater than myself. It was divinely orchestrated. It came out. It was my birthday. I it just went blah, and I couldn't quite pull it back in to think and. The next day I was supposed to go wire the funds. I'm like, well, you know what, got, you know, if that was something greater than me, I'm supposed to have. So at that point, I went to the bank the next day and we did a wire transfer of funds. I mean, once you put your order in, you have to be approved of your location. So um, at that point, I think she said it was a year out. And then ultimately we talked again and she said I would have it in September. And then right. I had to, you know, find location place, whatever I was gonna do and stabilize all that. So yeah. And so, yeah, what what city will it be in in Florida? It's going to be it's going to be in Cape Coral locally here. Nice. Um, I looked at everybody and how they named their facilities, trying to figure out a name. Um, and I decided I want to keep it very simple of what it is. So I'm just going to call it EES, Scalar Wave Healing of Cape Coral. My my facility is only it's a 400 square foot facility. I'm going to have the chairs in there. I intend to do children for free. I will have um, five chairs available 24 hours a day for children. And at night, I'm going to open at night. Most centers are only open the, during the day, um, not only for sleepovers, but I'm opening at night primarily for people on Social Security, people that have financial needs that can't afford to be in this facility. They'll fill out the pa paperwork if they qualify. I'll do it at night for them for free. I mean, however we can share it, we're gonna share it. I intend to I intend to share it as much as I can. Well, it's it's a very exciting to think that you're going to be having your own healing center. And in the meantime, then you can go to Sarasota if you need to for a treatment. Uh, that's what I do. What mm -hmm. I'm excited about is I can I'm gonna help people. And it's going to be people on my community to start with. And it's going to allow me, and I'm going to take the time to be a part of it 
for however long it is to get it running proficiently. Right. But um, but I am excited about the potential of what this can do. I can give you all the stories in the world of what happened to me. Mm-hmm. I can even provide documentation. It doesn't mean anything. It only means something when you're in it and it's your story and it's your experience. If my stories get you into the door of my system or anybody's system, thank God for that because you will leave with your own story and it will be your own healing. And I do believe that today my healings are miraculous. It's a miracle. Too. Now I'm going to link underneath our video, a video which explains the equipment for all those that are interested. I, I am so grateful that you took the time to tell your personal story and uh, help others maybe get interested so they'll do their own research on the EES. Yes. And at least go try it out. You know, uh, Mm -hmm. four hours in the machine, it's $60 an hour. Four hours runs about $240. But that $240 can change your life. Definitely recommend it. Yeah. Thank you so much, my dear. I hope- Thank you so much. Speak again after you get your unit in and get it going. Well, actually- I would just love to come out for the grand opening. Thank you. I love you. Have a great day. Love you too, baby. Bye. Bye. Bye.